on culture, contract, contact and with other com cultures, forming and manufacturing. Many achievements in manufacturing took place during the Han Dynasty. As a result, productivity increased and the empire preserved. These changes paved the way for China to make contact with people of other cultures. By the Han period, the Chinese had become master of ironworks. The manu they manufactured iron swords and armor. They made the army more powerful. Commerce also gained from advances in iron. The iron plow and the wheelbarrow, a single wheeled cart, increased the fa farm output. With a wheelbarrow, a farmer could haul more than 300 pounds all by himself. With an iron plow, he can still till more land and raise more food. Um, another item that increased in production during the Han Dynasty was silk, a soft, light, highly valuable valued silk for centuries. Centur Chinese women had known the worms, um, had known the complicated methods, methods needed to raise silk worms, and win the silk threads of the cocoons, and then prepare the threads for dyeing and waving the Weaving, the Chinese were determined to keep their procedure for making silk a secret. Revealing these secrets was a punishable de by death. During the Han period, weaver, weavers such used foot-powered looms to weave silk threads into beautiful fabric. Garments made by silk, made from the silk, were very expensive. Trade routes, Chinese goods, especially silk and fine pottery were valued, high, highly valued for by people in other, in other lands. During the Han period, the value of these goods to people outside Chinese helped increase trade. Expansion of trade. Trade increased partly because Han armies conquered lands deep in Central Asia. Leaders there told the Han general that people who lived still farther west wanted silk. At the same time, Emperor Wu Di wanted strong, sturdy Central Asian forces for his army. China's leaders saw that they could make a profit by bringing silk to Central Asia and trading the cross for horses. horses. Then Central Asian people would then take the silk west and trade it for other products they wanted. The Silk Road. Traders used a series of overland trade routes to make China good, Chinese goods to distant barriers. Buyers. The most famous trade route was known as the Silk Road. The 4,000 mile long network of routes stretched westward from China across Asia's deserts and mountain ranges through the Middle East until it reached the Mediterranean Sea. Chinese traders did not travel the entire Silk Road. Upon reaching Central Asia, they sold their goods to local traders who would trail them to the rest of the way. Traveling the Silk Road was difficult. Hundreds of men and camels loaded with valuable goods, including silks and jade, formed groups. They traveled the Silk Road together for protection. Armed guards were hired to protect traders from bandits who stole cargo and water, a precious necessity. Uh, weather weather presented other dangers. Traders faced ice billard, ice, ice, icy blizzards, desert heat, and blinding sun storms. Named after the most famous item transporting along it, the Silk Road was worth it in risk. Silk was so popular in Rome, for example, that China grew wealthy from that trade relationship along traders returned from Rome with silver, gold, precious stones, and horses. Buddhism comes to China. When the Chinese people came into contact with other civilizations, they exchanged items along with the trade goods. Among these ideas was a re new religion in the first century AD. Buddhism spread it from India to China across the Silk Road and other trade routes. Arrival of a new religion. Over time, the Han government became less stable. People ignored laws and violence was common. As rebellions flared up, millions of peasants went hungry, became violent, uh, went hungry, life became violent and uncertain. Many Chinese looked at to Taoism and Confucianism 
to find out why they had to suffer so much, but they didn't help find helpful answers. Buddhism seemed to provide more hope than the traditional Chinese belief did. It offer, offered rebirth and relief from suffering. This promise was a major reason for the reason the Chinese people embraced Buddhism. Impact on China. First, Indian Buddhism. Buddhists had trouble explaining their religion to the Chinese. Then they used the ideas found in Taoism to help describe Buddhism beliefs. Many people grew curious about Buddhism. Before long, Buddhism caught on China was both poor and the upper classes. By AD 200, Buddhist altars stood in the emperor's palace. Buddhism's introduction to China is an example of diffusion, the spread of ideas, goods, and technology from one culture to another. Elements of Chinese culture changed in response to the new, new faith. For example, scholars translated Buddhist texts into Chinese. Many Chinese became Buddhist monks and nuns. Artists carved towering statues of Buddhas into mountain walls. The giant Buddha statue in China is among the largest in the world. It was carved from a hillside look, and looks down over the meeting places of three rivers.